So when we're looking at protein intake, not only do we have to get that upper end of that starting with one gram per pound and trying to eke our way up to 1.1 to 1.5 grams per pound, it's really essential to keep those amino acids going in order to have the signaling for lean mass development. And when I'm talking lean mass, I'm not talking just muscle, I'm also talking bone. I'm in the middle of a girl crust sandwich between Dr. Stacy Sims and Haley Babcock of Haley Happens. So I'm super excited to be here because these two ladies are changing lives, including mine. A year ago, I was struggling through a very difficult recovery from a hysterectomy. And my recovery, my doctors told me was normal, but uncommon, which I refused to believe. And now thanks to these two, I am back and feeling stronger than ever. So hysterectomy is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I a lot of people don't really realize how impactful it is on their bodies because like I tell a lot of women, you go in premenopausal and you wake up postmenopausal. It's massive. What kinds of symptoms and like what really threw you for a loop when you went through all this? Like, Tell me your story. Yeah, well, first of all, it was really sudden. I had the um, hysterectomy because I was diagnosed with a genetic disease called Lynch syndrome that is very rare. My mother had endometrial cancer and then I later found out I had this gene. So wow. I went from finding out I had the this Lynch syndrome to surgery in under two months. Oh, wow. Oh, and so, yeah, so it's a total hysterectomy with a uh, bilateral spilingoophorectomy, which is all the things, right? No eggs. No nothing. No ovaries. Correct. No uterus, all taken out. So Correct. fully postmenopausal. Yes. Which I call the menopause cliff. Yes, absolutely. And so when you start to try to find resources for how to approach menopause because it's surgically induced, there's nothing out there. Yeah. So my symptoms, I felt like um, all my guts essentially fell through the, the basement floor essentially because there was no structure. Um, I couldn't eat. Um, most people tell you you're going to gain weight, but I lost 15 pounds at least. Wow, wow. Um, super sensitive to inflammatory foods. I couldn't work out. Uh, so what should have been a six to eight week recovery, I was 14, 16 weeks later before I was really starting to see a difference. Uh, I found you, Dr. Hi. Sims, through this process of trying to find resources on menopause, um, transitioning out of and weight training and doing all of those things. So I read your book and um, Actually, the thing that really started to change my trajectory was I followed some of the recommendations that you made around um, protein intake, nice. food timing, um, prioritizing sleep, all of the things. Some of them that I had done before, um, but I had never, I went from not being able to eat to taking in you know, 140 grams of protein in a pretty wow. short period of time. So for me to be able to do that, that was following both the food, the sleep, and some of those uh, things that you recommended were the things that started to turn it around for me. But symptom-wise, when I started was no sleep, hot flashes, uh, couldn't eat, you name it. Yeah, and mostly what happens, like a lot of people will go through natural perimenopause, mm -hmm. their body has time to downregulate all of our receptors for estrogen, progesterone, and to some extent, some testosterone. But with medical menopause like this, it's like, Boom. And so right. all of your receptors are like, what happened? Mm -hmm. So your severity of symptomology is most likely 10 times greater than someone going through perimenopause on a natural basis. Right. So being able to put that kind of protein in to attenuate some of these things, that's great. Because there are a lot of women like, I can't get one gram per pound of body right. weight. And here you're getting 140 mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. Correct. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so once I, I would say I, I was still trying to exercise and kind of stay on top of it, um, I was having a very difficult time recovering. So my, that was the other symptom I had is I just could not recover mm -hmm. from my workouts. Um, and so over time, again, I added some of the adaptogens actually nice. that you recommend yeah, in yeah. the book. And I tried some of those things that I, some of them I still take. Um, and so then I was like, okay, I'm feeling better. And I'm like, power happens is coming out. So I'm like, all right, this is where this all comes <laughs> together. So yeah. then I started and I had done weight training before. So I was like, well, I'm not really a beginner. So I jumped right back into like advanced, intermediate oh. advanced, which it's tough. Bad. It's hard. Yeah. I know it's a hard one. I was like, I should have scaled it down a bit. So I, I went back and I bought beginner yeah. <laughs> and I went back and humbled myself and did the beginner power happens program, which 
combining all of the things, that was the first time I've really connected weight training with macros. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. so doing the, that program was super helpful in helping me combine kind of your recommendations with the Power Happens program. So after I did that, I worked back into the uh, intermediate and then advanced part. And since then, then I've done uh, shred. I did shred in the fall oh, yeah. and I've done foundations and now I'm in physique. So since then I've stayed in the program and, um, and had some follow-ups, but, but I, still, I still use your book as a reference manual. Oh, great. So, Love it. 100%. Awesome. So tell me, because it is super hard for a lot of women to get 140 grams of protein or even 100 grams of protein, how did you step load that to where you could just get up there and feel like you were getting all of the protein that you required? It, it took a minute for me to get there. Um, so what I did was start with something I already did, which I had a protein shake every morning when I would wake up and you know I would add some flax and things like that to that. So I'd start with a protein shake. And then the biggest change I made was within 30 to 40 minutes after I would work out, I came home and I would have an egg with some egg whites, mix it up. Uh, I have this every day with some greens and tomatoes every time, every, within 30 minutes of awesome. my workout. So every day, that's, that starts me out, you know, by that point in the day, I'm around 40, 45 grams. Yeah, and then nice. I started to find um, things like this is, I started eating tuna, which I've never been able to do <laughs> in my, from the whole thing, it's really hard to find <laughs> protein sources. So I, I finally found a tuna recipe and a tuna brand I could tolerate. So yeah. I will sometimes have like a tuna or I'll make a pork tenderloin or something just to have leftovers, yes. you know, because packing my lunch is critical. Yeah. Yeah. So I pack my lunch and I'll have whatever leftover lean proteins I might have from a dinner I cooked previously, or I'll have tuna salad or something like that. Um, and you know, it's pretty easy. I, I throw, I throw those bags of frozen vegetables and broccoli in my lunch box and I have the most boring looking lunch in the office. Um, but it works. So, right. If I get there, then like mid afternoon, maybe I'll have Greek yogurt with some frozen berries, mm -hmm. a teeny bit of honey, mix that in. Um, and then I plan ahead and make protein rich dinners. So nice. if you do that and you kind of start building a repertoire, it may be boring at first, but then every, every once in a while you grab a new recipe and add it into the rotation. It's about the consistency, right? It it's is. like once you get into that pattern and mm -hmm. you know, this works and I have this and you have your repertoire, then it becomes easy. And then I do use your, I do use some of your recommendations from your Instagram of like this kind of protein shake or this, you, you know, this kind of turkey jerky that you have on, yeah. you know, in a bind yeah. when you have to travel. It really is not that hard once you get the staples down, but it seems overwhelming at first. It is. Yeah. And then it just becomes what you do. It is. Yeah. Now it's second nature. Yeah. It's that routine. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we're looking at the recommendations for protein intake, we see that there is an age related, uh, I guess, anabolic resistance. That means your muscles are less apt to adapt to resistance training and protein. Mm -hmm. But when we look at aging, men age in a linear fashion, women, we hit perimenopause or postmenopause and bam, it's like off the cliff and your muscles don't respond very well. So we're looking at protein intake. Not only do we have to get that upper end of that starting with one gram per pound and trying to eke our way up to 1.1 to 1.5 grams per pound, it's really essential to keep those amino acids going in order to have the signaling for lean mass development. And when I'm talking lean mass, I'm not talking just muscle, I'm also talking bone. Because those are the two most rapid things that women lose when they hit this change in their hormones. So when we're boosting that whole protein intake, not only does it help with our bone and our muscle, also our brain function, some of our gut function, our immune system, we also see that it feeds forward to helping regulate our appetite hormones. So there's so many things that people don't understand about protein because we automatically put it in the box of, it's just for building muscle, but it's not. So when we're looking at all of the functions that are affected by our hormones changing and dropping off, we look at protein as like the number one macronutrient that we need to focus on when we're in at this stage. So as you were getting back into strength training and starting at a beginner level, how did you transition and feel when you started lifting heavier again? You know, I felt really great. Well, actually, no, I felt terrible initially um, because I, I think there's so little guidance out there on, on you know, just okay. saying lift heavy. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. And so when you're in the gym, even and I work out with a trainer on occasion, and even then, what I think I've heard you refer to in some of your posts have been about the random training. Yeah. So you're going in and you're doing lifting heavy and maybe you're doing bench presses and deadlifts and all of those things. 
and maybe you're tracking how much weight you're adding and maybe you even go to upper versus lower, but there's no real long-term plan mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so I think it keeps you from seeing progress. I ended up with frozen shoulder, you know, a lot of those types of things. Now that I've been training on the program, the following the mixture of the foundation, lift heavy, and some of those things, I would say, one, I've enjoyed adding some of the, um, especially some of the stuff from foundation where you're really working on offset loading. I've just learned a lot more. Yeah. You learn a lot about the offset loads and different types of, when do you need to do um, the hypertrophy really more, you know, and versus just lifting heavy and some of those things. So I, I would say I've enjoyed just the variety, but it's also because as you go through the different programs, you learn that it's not just go and lift as much as you can. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. there's a season for all of the things. So that's probably been the biggest benefit. I think that's one of the questions I get all the time or like, what is lifting heavy? And I always give the example of five by five because that's right. standard, but there's so many different options within that. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is like you found is you have to kind of phase into it and if you're mixing it up, it's about the neuromuscular aspect. Because when we lose estrogen, we're losing the impetus for building muscle, because it's a basal cell stimulator to build mm -hmm. muscle fibers. It's also responsible for how strong our, our protein, contractile proteins actually bind to, together. So we lose an impetus for having a strong contraction. And we also lose the ability for the nerve to conduct really quickly. So when I'm talking about lifting heavy and strength training, it's the eye defining that external stress mm -hmm. that's going to create an adaptive response in the body that estrogen used to. Right. So if we're starting at any load that feels heavy, then that's relatively lifting heavy. And as we become more complex in our abilities, then we're looking at the periodization, the French contrast, uh, areas where you're doing lower loads, maybe higher reps for more of the muscle fiber development and then we're looking at the heavier loads with really good technique for that real central nervous system neuromuscular connection to replace estrogen it also makes it more sustainable because Absolutely. you're changing yeah. you're not doing the same thing all the time which makes it an easier thing to make a lifestyle yeah and you get to go to your playground almost every day and have some fun <laughs> Stacey, I have to say thank you for one thing specifically. I have been an early adopter of a lot of technology and wellness trends and those types of things. And so I was listening to a lot of the current uh, podcasts and different things. And, and, and then I read your book and I just thank you for saving me from the cold plunge. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I was getting ready to try to put it to that. in my repertoire. And I was like, no, Dr. Sim says don't do it. I've had a lot of women come up and tell me that I... Well, I always feel awful in the cold plunge, but then I went to cool and I feel amazing. I'm like, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I never want to jump into the freezing cold Absolutely river not. in winter. No. <laughs> Sauna all the way for me, but you know, I see the appeal of cool water. <gasps> yeah. What really brings you here? Like, what is the, the impetus for you sitting here in your girl crush? Yeah. Uh, well, because I'm just really excited to share my story because I imagine there are a lot of other women out there who have struggled through um, surgically induced menopause via hysterectomy and um, there's very little information out there. And so I just wanted to be able to share my story about how working through your recommendations and the Haley Happens programs, Power Happens, how it all can really help someone not just get back to where they started, but even stronger. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Hannah. I love your story. It's so beautiful. We're so glad that you're here. So nice to meet you. <laughs> Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thanks for your story. Thank you. There's a wealth of information here, so be sure to check out all the tips available.